the mean value theorem is a generalization of Rolle's theorem. So let's do this in pictures first, and then I'll put up the actual mathematical formulation. Let's start with a function that is continuous and differentiable on some interval a, b. So here's our function, continuous and differentiable. Not necessarily everywhere, but at least on this interval here, a to b. And then what do we get for that? Well, we can follow these points a and b up to the function, and then we get two points on the function, which we'll call f of a and f of b. Technically these are y values, but you get the idea here, f of a and f of b. And then we want to look at this secant line here connecting these two. Remember, the secant line is a line that connects the two points, and we get the slope of that secant line. Right, using good old-fashioned algebra, the slope here is y2 minus y1. It's just rise over run over x2 minus x1. Well, in this case, we have f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. What the mean value theorem tells us is that there is some point down here, there exists a c between a and b such that when you follow it up, you can take the derivative at that point, and the derivative will be exactly the slope of that secant line, f prime at c, okay, equals the slope of the secant line. So these two things are equal. So it guarantees us essentially some point in there that has the same slope at the tangent line as these, this entire interval has for its secant line. This backwards e, again, is for exists, there exists. So that's the theorem in pictures. Now let's check it out in words. If f is continuous on the closed interval a to b and differentiable on the open interval a to b, then there exists at least one point c in the open interval a to b such that f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. That is, the slope of the tangent line at c is the same as the slope of the secant line between f of a and f of b. I'm not going to prove this right now. There's a nice proof in pretty much any calculus book. Um, there's also plenty of videos out there. I may link to a video or, or share one at some point, or maybe do my own proof at some point. Uh, for now, let's go on to an example. So I'll leave the mean value theorem up, and below it we have the example, kind of starting here. Show that the mean value theorem applies and find the point guaranteed by the MVT, and we're given the function f of x equals sine x, on the interval negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. The important thing with these kinds of mean value theorem problems is to show that it meets the conditions in the if part of the theorem. So the if part is all here. If f is continuous on the closed interval a, b. Well, this is continuous because it's a trig function. And remember, all trig functions are continuous on the domain. And the domain of sine x is all real numbers. So I'm just going to say check because it's a trig function. So you want to note something like that uh, to show that it's continuous. Um, OK, how about differentiable on the open interval negative pi over 2 to pi over 2? We'll again check because it's continuous and because it has no corners or asymptotes. So I'll just write no corners, no corners because if he had an asymptote, it would not be continuous. So the only way it can make it not differentiable for a continuous function in this case is for it to have no corners. Okay, we've satisfied the if part of the theorem. So then we can say thus by the mean value theorem. So then we write thus, okay, and then we get the conclusion by the MVT, okay, universally understood to be the mean value theorem, I would say. Uh, there must be at least one point in there. Oh, we need to calculate this slope first. So let's do that. Okay, we have f of b minus f of a. So that's sine pi over 2 minus sine negative pi over 2 all over pi over 2 minus minus pi over 2. Okay, well, you may recall that sine pi over 2 is 1 sine of negative pi over 2 is negative 1, so this is 1 minus minus 1 all over pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is pi, so this all comes to 2 over pi. 
That's the slope of the secant line there. So then we are guaranteed, back to our theorem here, the mean value theorem guarantees us, um, I'll say there is a C in this open interval, negative pi over two to pi over two. Open interval means it has the soft parentheses, it doesn't include the endpoints, such that, such that f prime of c equals what? Well, it equals this secant line slope here, 2 over pi. And thus we have completed the proof. So you can put a little proof box there, a little box. You don't have to. So that's the end of the mean value theorem. That's all the mean value theorem cares about. It doesn't say a word about how to find that point that gives you that uh, derivative, and it doesn't even care if, if there even is a way to find it. It just guarantees that somewhere in there that point exists, and it could take a lifetime to find it. In this case, it's not so bad. We can actually find it. How do we do that? Well, f of x is simply sine x here, sine x. So then f prime of x is cosine of x. All right, this should all be on ready recall here. And we need to find a, a point such that cos of x is 2 over pi. Well, to solve for x, we can just take the arc cosine of both sides. So that just gives us x equals the arc cosine, cos negative 1, of 2 over pi, which we can then compute, put that into a calculator, make sure you're in radians. It gives us about 0 0.881.